Okay, so I, I'm going to talk about um, my new book, Noontide Toll, uh, which came out this year. It's my eighth book uh, of fiction, I think. And um, it's a book that, uh, to me, uh, is trying to do a lot of different things. Um, one of the most interesting aspects for me is actually to, to play around with the idea of short stories and the novel. Um, and you'll find in this book that there's a single character who tells uh, who's the narrator of it, a man called Vasantha. And Vasantha is a man who's retired and decided to become a van driver and run a taxi van in Sri Lanka. And the time is, this is after the end of the war in 2009. And uh, he does this because he likes driving. Uh, he likes being behind the wheel. And it gives him an opportunity to travel around. And so he goes on this journey around the country, he goes north uh, to, the, to the areas which had been most ravaged during the war. And he goes down south as well. And so the book is divided into north and south. <laughs> and um, he basically tells you his stories. Um, and you could say it's a sort of episodic novel. Um, you could also say it's a collection of short stories, because the stories stand alone. But there is a cumulative effect if you read them one after the other. And kind of thing I wanted to do, I suppose, is for those people who uh, are hesitant about delving into a novel but do like short stories. Um, this would be a kind of um, a meal of very small dishes so that they would taste one thing after another and at the end of it they would have discovered they've had a meal. So inadvertently they would have read a novel. And for those people who don't like short stories you know, and there are many of those as well who like to get into a novel. Uh, this works as a novel. There's a journey, from, there's a beginning and an end. Uh, and we go on a journey and we go on the journey with Vasantha. And Vasantha is the driver, which is a little bit like a writer sitting off on a journey, writing a book. You don't quite know where you're going, but you know when you get there. Um, and the point is the journey, really. And so Vasanta takes you and takes his passengers to Jaffna, uh, to Mulativu. Uh, those are places in the north. And tries to understand what's happened, what's happened in this place, what's happened to people in this place. Um, and how do you deal with the past, a very difficult past? Um, and how do you deal with a very difficult future as well? And to me, you know, fiction is partly that. That's why we read fiction. We write, read fiction to discover who we are, you know, where we've come from, where we're going. Um, so I just hope you enjoy the journey if you decide to climb into the van with Vasantha. Um, probably not the whole thing. Um, I started off, actually, um, Actually, with, like with a lot of my books, not quite knowing where it's going to end. Um, but I very quickly met Vasantha in my head, as it were. Um, and I think this is how I write. I, uh, with, with all my novels, I come across a character uh, in my head, as it were, whose company I like uh, and whose company I want to keep. Um, and... Uh, when I started out, I think there was a story, actually it's one of the early stories here, it's called, uh, it's called Folly now. Um, it's not the opening story because there's a kind of prologue with which we open. And Folly is a, is a journey up to Jaffna uh, where Vasantha takes a couple of, well, three people up to Jaffna to visit the fort in Jaffna. Uh, and we are, we are in Goa now, and there's a very familiarity in, 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 in this, which is, this is, a, this is an old uh, Portuguese and Dutch fort, which was, a, which was a, an important uh, uh, place 
during, during the, the recent war. Um, both sides have occupied the place and it's been destroyed. Um, now, there's a, pl there's a connection with me and this place in the sense that though I'm not from, from that part of the country, my uh, mother did live in Jaffna when she was a young girl. And she did, she did tell me as I was growing up about her time there. And she talked a lot about the fort particularly. Um, and so I, I'd never seen it. And I, and I did go after the end of the war and visited it. And, um, you know, it's, it's obviously devastated. It's a destroyed place. Um, and it had a certain emotional kick to it, I suppose, when I went to see it. Uh, as indeed a lot of that part of the world is for a lot of people, uh, whether they're from there or not. Um, and I did want to write something about, about that visit. Um, and in the end, I did write a non-fiction piece about, about that trip. But when I, was, when I was thinking of writing fiction, um, the place kept coming back to me. And then Vasanta appeared in my head and uh, so I was writing basically a short story about Vasantha taking a group of people, going up to Jaffna, going up to Jaffna Fort in particular, in, and, and it was, the story evolved into, into one where he's actually taking uh, a couple of uh, people from, from Holland, um, to visit the place as part of a renovation project. It was a Dutch fort. Um, <coughs> uh, eventually, it was a Dutch, Dutch fort. Um, and so it was a story really about these characters dealing with the past, I guess. Um, but in the writing of that, it became clear to me that Vasanta was a person I wasn't going to let go of at the end of that story. And I could suddenly see a book developing or a set of stories developing. Um, and possibly at that stage, it may have then ended up as just two or three stories. Um, but as, as I sort of thought more about it and as the stories started, started formulating themselves in my mind, I could see this actually turning into, into a book and into a novel. Um, but a novel that plays with that structure of, you know, what exactly is a novel and what are the differences between, between short, the short form and the longer form. Um, and it's something that I've often thought about. My first book was a book of, book of short stories called uh, Monkfish Moon. And, you know, this is going back 20 years, more than 20 years. Uh, and that was definitely a collection of short stories. I wanted a collection of short stories. I wrote a collection of short stories. But even there, it wasn't a random selection of stories. Uh, I wanted a book that was unified and had a pattern to it. So in, even in that book, Monkfish Moon, the stories are in a certain order. And I think they're better in the order that they are than in any other order. Um, and I think there's something to be gained in reading that book from beginning to end, though it's not essential to it. Um, whereas, so, so even when I was writing those, I was conscious of this question of what makes it a short story, what makes it a longer story. And it's a problem that writers have thought about for forever, and there isn't a clear answer. Uh, and for the, those of you who might be listening to this and interested in the craft of it and the idea of form and you know, how do I know whether I'm writing a short story or a novel? People ask me that, I and mean, students ask me that. People who are starting to write often ask about, how do you know? And part of it is you don't know. Uh, part of it is you decide. Um, and, you know, oddly enough, length, length is part of the, the idea. Um, though it isn't all clear cut because you can have very short novels that are novels, definitely. Um, and you can have huge, huge novels and there might be a little question mark, is this really a novel or is it a short story? The fa most famous of this, these is, is Ulysses, 
by Joyce, which is, of course, you know, hugely significant novel in, in the tradition, in the history of the novel, everything else. But there are occasional people who ask, well, actually, is this just a very, very long short story? Uh, because it has a sense of unity, it has a sense of moment, of, and lots of characteristics that people think of as a short story. So I think those, those ideas have always been with me. And, and I guess one of the challenges for me in, in the first book, Monkfish Moon, was to make each story something that, as you're reading it, you might forget that question, is this a short story or a novel? And you might actually think for a moment you're in a novel. And the only difference is that moment will only last a limited amount of time because you finish that short story usually at a sitting, whereas novels on the whole, you have a relationship with um, you know, very good and gripping novels you may finish very quickly, very big novels you might have a relationship which is for a lot of people hugely frustrating because you never get beyond a certain point because life doesn't allow you to uh, and things like that so uh, I want in anything I write it to be the case that when you're in the page you're in the page and nowhere else so is this a novel is this a short story it doesn't matter it's just where you are I think I think the construction of the sentence is the job, is the real task, is the real challenge. Um, and for all the difficulties people have about writing novels or short stories or what to do about it, how you talk about it, how you, you know, any of those things pair into insignificance because the real challenge is to be able to write a sentence a simple sentence and it is extraordinarily difficult I think um, I, I still don't know how one does it um, I think there's some magic involved in it um, at some level and I've often wondered and I think you know this is something I do ask you know if I'm talking to to new writers or students on is you know, look at a page of writing. Forget what people talk about it. Forget what's written on the back. Forget everything. Just try to be that person who first, first got, got this bug about reading. And look at a page and see what is going on. Why is it that in one book, I mean, I'm just open this in random. There's a sentence here, very simple sentence. It says, I pushed my plate away. Now for me, that sentence there, which is just in the middle there, has to be absolutely right. And hopefully it is right on this page. But this exact same sentence could be in another book. And it just doesn't work. So, I mean, you, you I don't know, whoever your favorite writer is, whether it's um, Hemingway or Rushdie or whoever, you look at it and see if it's working, you know, there'll be a sentence there which you could find in another dozen other books. But on this page, at that moment, somehow, it's perfectly right. And that's to do with the other sentences around it, the paragraph, and eventually it's to do with the, all the sentences in there. And, um, and I think that is, you know, it's, it's constructing that. And, you know, to me, to construct a really good sentence that works is as difficult as constructing a bridge. You know, how do you do that? How, how is a bridge made? You know, uh, how do they get that thing to go from there and say, oh, okay, so if you're an engineer, civil engineer, you know how to do that. Uh, but it's still amazing. Okay, I suppose, you know, the cumulative effect, I think it's one of the things that may be, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about this, but it may be that one of the things we might expect in a short story is that you kind of get it in a go. You kind of, you know, the, whatever's going on, the thing that's happened, happens there. Whereas in a novel, I think you do want a different kind of development to happen. Um, and there are no rules to novels, you know, and that's the beauty of it. 
And you know, there are a million different kinds of novels, as there are a million different kinds of writers and so on. But in a novel, something does happen, something changes. Now, in some novels, it's, it's, it's the changes in the plot. You can see, you know, X, y, you know, certain things happen, consequences and so on. In others, it might be a character developing. Either the, per the character develops themselves, himself or herself, or your understanding or their understanding of themselves changes over time. But it could be a development just in, in the text. You know, you could be that kind, you know, a certain artistic kind of writer for whom it is somehow textually there's a, there's a change. Now, in, uh, I'm, and I'm interested in, in all of those. So I think with different books, there are different aspects that have changed. For example, book, uh, my first novel, Reef, um, there is one of the developments in it that I was interested in is the development of language. And uh, today in one of the sessions, there's quite a lot of talk about language and uh, uh, it was a talk about the English language and uh, the relationship different writers, particularly here now in India, might have with the language and with other regional languages and so on. Well, in Reef, you know, one of the things is this, the narrator in that is a man called Triton. Um, he's a servant boy who eventually grows up to be a restaurant owner in London. He starts off in Sri Lanka as a servant boy. And to my mind, one of the interesting aspects of it, which I suppose isn't the one that's most immediate for most people, is his relationship with the language. Because obviously, the, the book is written in English, the voice is English, and part of the story is not just him growing up, but his growing control of the language. And it becomes his language. Just as the world he lives in is somebody else's world, and eventually it becomes his world, and he owns it. And his ownership of the language is hugely, to me, important. And it's what a writer does in any language, is that when they start out, they don't know where they are, they don't know what they're doing, they don't know much. The, the end of their first book, they're beginning to discover and own a language. And it becomes their voice eventually. And Triton, that's what he does. And therefore, in that book, you hopefully, as a reader, might, if you are interested in that sort of thing, notice how the language changes from a very simple language to one way it becomes more complex and there's a development that he actually begins to own it. So in this book, for example, in Nuntai Tol, I guess the development is in his own thinking. Vasantha's uh, thinking to do with how do I deal with, uh, sorry, uh, with, the, with the past, basically. Um, and for me, you know, this is a book set in post-war Sri Lanka, but it's, you know, the wider aspect of that, I suppose, is how do you deal post anything traumatic, where there's a competition as to what the past was, and there's a competition about what the future is going to be. And as an individual, having to relate yourself and place yourself in the view of the past, in the view of the future. So I guess the development is, um, I mean, I can't give it away, but, you know, Vasanta starts with a full tank in his, in, his, in his van, and so your first story is called The Full Tank, uh, and it ends uh, with what you could call an epilogue, which is running on empty. And so in the process of that emptying of that tank, um, we've filled the pages, he's filled his head with a lot of stories, and hopefully a reader would have filled themselves with something. Um, not answers, but he is, in a sense, he, he has, he has uh, addressed something, I guess.